Hi there, I'm Danny Henderson, and part of my work in this life is as a spiritual therapist, a therapist, and I just had a beautiful session with a private client who um, is going through various ups and downs and is also on her spiritual journey. And I just wanted to check in here because there are so many of you really falling apart, really having a hard time uh, with the way you feel. But I want to tell you that it isn't just about you. It is the energy on the planet. There is a literal physical, mental, emotional ascension happening on this beautiful planet that we live on. She is a living being. And if she is making changes and we're living in harmony with her, in agreement with her, then we are going to be affected by her, by Mother Earth, by Pachamama, by Gaia, by Tara, by Planet Ki. There are so many names for the mother that we live upon. Um, and I'm so grateful. I know most of you are so grateful to live on this beautiful planet too. So I wanted to give you a couple of reminders and a couple of tips uh, because, I mean, so much on my channel is about the galactics, about our beautiful ET brothers and sisters, about the things that are happening in the systems, military, educational, historical, scientific, uh, corruptions, whatever. We know that's happening and we're moving through as a beautiful, loving uh, humanity, a, a revolution uh, to go through that. But on the way, we must remember our individual selves. You know, and and it doesn't really matter who your star family is or if you're an angel in a past life and you're back here. The most important thing right now is you, the person in this vessel, in your body, your ship, your container. And so some of the ways that you can instantly get yourself out of a funk, I think one of the quickest ways I can help you is by reminding you, probably for the 10th time on my channel, but it's good. We need it over and over again. I know I do. I need reminders all the time. But but the one breath, the one breath, when you just take one second to simply go. Now, let me tell you what you're doing. When you consciously take a breath in through the nose, you are releasing brain chemistry. You are releasing three beautiful chemistries. You are releasing dopamine, serotonin, and endorphins. But if you are not manufacturing serotonin in your beautiful brain, you will start to tank. You'll tank hormonally. You'll start feeling depression. That's what happens when we're not topping ourselves up. So literally an in-breath, to release the endorphins, the serotonin, and the um, the endorphins, the serotonin, and the dopamine. Now, what I do when I take the breath out, I'll put my hand on my tummy and I'll push the breath down into my body, into the belly. So almost my belly's like popping out. And that's known as the Buddha breath in some ancient spiritual practices, but really it doesn't matter if it's ancients or not. All I care about is you getting the information now. We can put the flowery labels on later. It's about you getting instant relief. So in through the nose, out through the mouth and down into the belly. When I do that, and I'm a feisty bugger, you know, I'm a very passionate individual um, and uh, very expressive. And the second I do that, it, it makes me a little lightheaded. It, I can feel the balance happening. And it's so lovely and it's free. It's so free. Uh, now, grounding. If you have the tiniest piece of grass outside your house, the tiniest area that you can go, you know, even wearing flip-flops, even if it's cold and there's some grass or some dirt or some sand and you just get your feet just for a minute, I just imagine standing literally 60 seconds, 30 seconds, standing barefoot on land in a park, closing your eyes and feeling yourself just drop into the earth. Just breathe into the earth. Just feel, literally focus on your feet and knowingly allow the connection to happen. We are electromagnetic beings. This planet is an electromagnetic being. We cohabit with her, which means we can naturally, easily, non-forcibly blend with her energies and her with us. We live in tandem with her. So let's use the energies that are here to help us, to support us 
as she's doing her best to support herself and raising her ascension too. What else did I write down? Walking for health on the spot. Literally, I've seen the largest women, the fattest women that have had horrible issues and God love them. You know, most fat people, most overweight people, you know, it's emotional. For some very overweight people, it is emotional. You know, for some people when they're stressed, they don't eat, they get super skinny. But for some of us, like me, you know, when I'm stressed, I eat. I eat my body weight in food <laughs> sometimes, you know. So when I see people who are, you know, really, really, really overweight, my heart always goes out to them because I know that most of what's happening with them is emotional. A lot of us eat our emotions, you know. Um, and so we need to always have compassion for everybody. You know, everybody's going through something. Everyone's going through something. There are no exceptions. Um, so anyway, for those of us that are able to get on our feet, we don't want to go to the gym because we feel too big. We don't want to walk down the street because we're worried about passing cars. And if you're a teenager, do you remember what that was like as a teenager? But even as an adult, you know, as gobby as I am, I get really shy too, just walking down the street sometimes. <laughs> you know, it's normal. It's normal. We all go through it. No one's exempt from it. It's a nonsense to think otherwise, honestly. Um, so for those of us that are able to get on our feet, you know, why don't we watch something on YouTube, you know, and walk on the spot for the whole time? Just walk on the spot. Just walk on the spot. It is amazingly meditative. It is literal exercise. You know, um, I got in that, remember years ago getting in the habit of doing that. And I've just started doing it again. Just started doing it again. So rather than lay down in my big lazy boy armchair, <laughs> I'll stand up. I'll stand up and I'll just kind of walk on the spot. You know, walking, walking on the spot. You know, <laughs> you're moving the brain chemistry. You have to move something. You have to physically move something. You have to get energy flowing. You really have to. You do have to, all jokes aside. Because if you don't, the energy inside you literally is stagnant, like a dirty sock on the floor that no one's going to touch. And it just lays there and it gets smellier and smellier and more and more unhealthy. Well, that's what happens. So don't be a smelly sock. <laughs> Move your ass. Walk on the spot if you can, if you're able. There's very few people that are unable to walk. Very few. And even for those that are unable to walk, sometimes sitting in the chair and twirling, you know, there's things online called chair yoga, anything like that, anything at all, my love, that you feel that you can do that's going to nourish you, it's going to serve you, it's going to help you in some way, because you need to be putting yourself first right now. And I do mean that you do need to be putting you, your mental health, your emotional health, and everything about you first, because we are never going to feel the same as we felt before the energy on the planet is raising up we are raising with her the consciousness of our planet is raising we are raising in our consciousness so it's our duty to love on us to take care of us minimal toxins minimal alcohol minimal cigarettes minimal weed minimal opioids minimal anything that isn't naturally part of you don't suddenly go off pills. I'm not saying that I'm not a doctor. I can recommend as a therapist, but I'm not uh, licensed to diagnose. And of course, there's bloody loads of you watching this. I think that's just silly. Let's not be silly. Uh, but definitely being aware of the recreational ways that we give ourselves highs um, is something we should definitely be mindful of. Mindful, mindful eating, mindful speaking you know, writing our feelings down. Here's two other ways to get frustration out as well. Big frustration. Sometimes I will be in my car driving along, thinking about all the things in the world that I'm, that I want to put right, you know, like swiping out all the governments and, you know, organizing the food and the warmth and the homes that every single living being should have access to, the clean water, the clean air. And sometimes I'll be in my car like a mad person having conversations out loud and I'll get so worked up, I hit that boiling point that we do, those of us with a pulse. Um, and so sometimes to release without anybody seeing me or hearing me, 
I will scream my head off in the car. Like I'll have a good old swear and F and a blind in the car. It's a, such a good way to release. Um, those of you with swimming pools um, or a local swimming pool, um, another good way is to go under the water and really scream under the water as well. It's a great, and if, even if there are people around, they're not going to hear you, but it is a good way to release. Um, having a really good cry, you know, just laying around and having a really good cry, you know, thinking about everything, thinking about animals you've lost and things that make you sad, you know, because sometimes we'll start raising tears for something and it's also like a tap for other things repressed energy again because our planet is ascending we are also ascending so a lot of the stuck shoved down energy pain old habits that we've been holding in our bodies probably from childhood a lot of us still that gives them an opportunity to come up and come out I mean have you ever done that where you suddenly started crying or you start feeling sad and then you start having a good old blub and you keep on blubbing and blubbing and blubbing. You don't know why you're blubbing, but you're blubbing and it's a good thing. And then afterwards you're exhausted, right? You feel good. You feel better. You might feel a bit sad still. Those are the kinds of cries where you have released something that was stuck in you that needed releasing, that something is healed, that you don't have to sit through that pain again. Isn't that lovely? Because we don't all want to go back into the pain. And we've all got pain, we've all got trauma, we've all got tragedy, we've all got violence somewhere that's happened. We've witnessed it, we know someone we love that has, or it's happened to us, you know? And so a lot of us hold back on healing because we don't want to have to sit in that pain again. There are some absolutely rubbish, rubbish, rubbish therapists, psychiatrists, and psychologists, complete rubbish who all they want to do is have you sit and regurgitate, regurgitate, regurgitate. How is that going to allow your cellular memory, that the memories that are trapped in the cells, in the body, in the physicality, in the energy body, even in the astral, how's it going to help them heal and move on if you're there just regurgitating? It really doesn't. It becomes a habit of sitting with a therapist and yakking and not moving, not moving, not clearing, not healing, you know? So the ways that I've suggested... And having the cry, again, is a beautiful way for you to know you don't have to go into all the pain, relive every single scene of your life, but by moving energy trapped in the body allows that sad feeling to move on, to release from your body. Um, <clears throat> let me see what else. Um, I would also recommend, I mean, a lot of us don't shut our laptops down every day. We don't. Or we're on our phone a lot and we have a lot of open things. I would recommend having a playlist that you love. Like I love, those of you that have come to our conference, Galactic Spiritual Informers Connection, you'll know now that every year we play such fun music uh, and everyone gets up and everybody dances. And there are some people that only dance once a year at our conference. <laughs> and it's amazing, it's amazing. There's people there in their seventies and eighties and they're dancing to 60s music like Wule Bule, Wule Bule, Wule Bule. I love that song. But things that get you moving, things that lift you up, things that make you feel happy and light, you know, and, and having a playlist ready, like set up on your phone or your laptop, just so when you start feeling a drop, put some music on, press one button, don't make an effort, just press one button, or look at funny things on YouTube, like I've said this a thousand times, I I, <laughs> I look up this video, I really shouldn't, I probably shouldn't admit this, uh, but I watch a video, and it's called Women Falling Over, Women Falling Over, and it is so funny to me, it's just these silly women in situations where they're they're falling over basically, but, and it's not, to, it's funny. It's a funny thing. It's just a humorous thing. So find things that are funny. I posted something on Facebook the other day and it's these two goats, <laughs> it's these two goats. Have you actually listened to goats and the way that they sound, the way that they talk? Oh my gosh, so the noises, they sound like people sometimes, noisy people. And I, I posted something on Facebook yesterday with these two goats <laughs> coming out and, and, and you know, barring whatever. Um, what does a goat do? Does it bar? It meh. Anyway, whatever it does, the noises that the little goats make. Um, things like that, funny things like that. Um, and so, you know, again, as we are 
moving into self-care, prioritizing self-care, prioritizing releasing energy in the body, prioritizing being honest with yourselves. And, and you know, there's a lot on this channel about the galactics, as I said, and the ETs and the ET craft and the civilizations that we're coming to meet. And the fact that our ET brothers and sisters have been here on our planet for so long. And some of us are them. And in the meantime, that isn't the most important thing. The most important thing is how you move through this time of ascension, and especially if you're parents with little kids, with all that time just vacuumed up every day, what are the things that you can do? And so the lovely lady, the client I just had, um, she's a mother with children and a husband and a business. Um, and we went through some of these very techniques together. And as I ended my uh, session with her, I just thought, you know what, let me just jump on here. Um, and share some of this directly with you beautiful people out there who I know we forget sometimes we forget some of the tools that we have and the skills that we have and the ways that we're able to regulate now me I get overwhelmed over sensorized and so I know it looks like there's something really wrong with me but honestly if you knew me you'd know I couldn't care less there's nothing I care less about than that but what I do to regulate myself is I'll literally do this and it doesn't matter where I am I did it walking down the aisle at the conference, you know, the galactic conference that I do every year, just for a minute, the, the overwhelm, the, the enormity hit me. I'm like, oh! and then, you know, I just regulate just by, you know, by doing that. And, and that helps me. It helps me. It helps my brain chemistry. It helps my body balance. It's doing something physical to move out the energy of overwhelm because we can become emotionally paralyzed if physically, you know, stuck. Um, on, a, on a thought, um, on a feeling, on a frequency. And so whatever it's going to do for you to release, for me, this is what I do. And I don't mind admitting, and I have no shame in it. Don't be ashamed at all. You do what is good for you. And if someone's got something to say about it, just ignore them. Who are they? This is you. Nobody can know how you feel inside. Nobody can. I don't care if you're married to a doctor. They can't know how you feel, my darling. This is an individual journey because you're an individual spark of the creator, you beautiful, beautiful being of light. Um, I uh, also recommend, you know, planning little trips, you know, planning trips, um, doing what you can do. Now I'm putting on a beautiful trip in England. Um, and so only for 20 of you though, um, it's gonna be May the 13th, 14th, 15th and 16th. And so, uh, I'll meet you in England, in Sussex, which is an absolutely stunning part of England. And we're going to go on a beautiful coach trip every day. And we are going to look at the British countryside. And I'm going to take you to some of the most stunning churches, village churches, ancient cemeteries, beautiful giant churches, massive architecture. There's so much in Britain. It's just amazing. Uh, and on the fourth day, we're going to get up early, early doors, and we're going to go to Glastonbury. And Glastonbury is one of the single most interesting places in Great Britain. It's on a beautiful ley line with Avebury and Stonehenge. And we're going to explore that lovely town of Glastonbury. Um, we're going to, those of us that feel up to it, we're going to climb the Tor, T-O-R. They say this is the home of Avalon, the ancient Avalon. There is an abbey in ruins in the town center of Glastonbury. And this is where it is said that Arthur and Guinevere were buried and their skeletons were discovered. There's so much to Glastonbury, but that's where we're gonna end up. Uh, we'll climb the tour. It's a nice hilly tour, half an hour climb up to a very small um, tower. It's part of a castle, a building, a church. There's lots of people's reasonings for what's up there, but it's really fascinating and it's wonderful. So come and explore. Uh, parts of Britain uh, with me um, and have something to look forward to and something to be excited about and uh, there's certain things to look for in cemeteries uh, we'll be I'll be pointing out um, some of the old bloodline families because there are gravestones here hundreds and hundreds of years old there are churches here thousands of years old thousands I'm going to take you to one uh, church that is 1180 and the pub next door is 11.60. And can you imagine? 11.60. And then in this church, in this um, this pub, this ancient tavern, that's still very, I was there on Saturday, 
um, checking it out. Um, there is a well in there and they dug it up and it goes way, 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 way down, way down. An ancient well. Can you imagine these things are still in existence? There's so much to look at. So anyway, so, so doing something like that, like planning for a trip, you know, looking forward to something, coming to our conference in September 27, 28, 29, the Galactic Spiritual Informers Connection Conference. Um, you know, making your own efforts to gather with friends, plan a picnic, or if you can't get out and you can't travel and your friends live everywhere, then pick a time on a Friday night and get everyone together on FaceTime or on Zoom and sit and hang out. You know, there's so much we can do to make ourselves feel better as we're getting through this time. Now, those of you that want to join me in Great Britain on May the 13th, 14th, 15th and 16th of this year, 2024, for the British Church Tour, um, then you can email me at info at galactic spiritual informers.com. Info at galactic spiritual informers.com. And I'll give you the name of the hotel where we've got discount, and then you get your own flights, you make your own way there, and then we pick you up every day in our luxury, luxury minibus, and then we go off playing in the countryside. All right, so again, this is really uh, for you to love on you, respect you, take care of you, because um, it's it's the most important time to do that. It's right now, it's not in six months, it's right flipping now, all right? All right, I'll leave you with that. I hope these tips are helpful. They've certainly been helpful for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of clients and patients that I have seen over my long, long life. I mean, I'm a bit of an old bag at this stage. <laughs> I look younger because I've got a light shining in my face, but I'm actually quite, quite up there in years. But anyway, lots of love. Uh, my name is Danny Henderson and uh, I'll see you soon.